Hi there, and welcome back to our chemistry flipped classroom. And today we are talking about acid base reactions or what we call neutralization reactions. <clears throat> so when we talk about an acid base reaction, we need to have an acid. And you remember from our nomenclature unit that an acid for our purposes right now is um, any chemical that begins with a hydrogen. So we're going to recognize that we have an acid because it's going to start with that hydrogen ion. Um, now, it's not going to have a plus symbol in it. It's just going to have H at the beginning of the compound. And then in order for us to have an acid-base reaction, we also have to have a base. And bases contain hydroxide ions. And because hydroxide ions are anions, they're always gonna come at the end. And so we're gonna recognize our base because it ends with hydroxide. And so just like all the other reactions that we've learned in this unit, we wanna to start to recognize this pattern. So when we see that we have a reaction that contains uh, one species that starts with a hydrogen and another species that ends with a hydroxide, we're gonna look at that and we're gonna identify that pattern and recognize that that means it's an acid-base reaction or a neutralization reaction. So let's look at this other name, neutralization. So we all know neutral can mean zero, it can mean uncharged, but in the case of acids and bases, we're talking about taking hydroxide and hydrogen and putting them together and getting water, and water is neutral in the world of chemistry. And so anytime we have an acid-base reaction, we're gonna take this hydrogen and this hydroxide, and we're gonna put them together and we're gonna wind up with this HOH or water. So we have this water. Um, so acid-base reactions are always going to produce water. We're gonna recognize that it's an acid-base reaction because it's, we have a species that starts with H and a species that ends with OH. Now we'll see that many times we're gonna have more than one hydrogen in our acid or more than one hydroxide in our base. Even when that's the case, we're still going to put them together individually, one hydrogen with one hydroxide to make water. And then we're gonna to need to balance our reactions. So let's take a look at an example. Um, and whoops, this is our second example. Let's look at our first example. Example. Sorry. Um, and I've gone ahead and written these in different colors just to make it a little bit easier to keep track of what's going on here. So first thing we do anytime we have a reaction is we take a look at it and see if we can identify what type of reaction it is. And I see that I have this hydroxide right here. So that tells me I have a base and I have a hydrogen right here. So that tells me I have an acid. So right away, I know that I'm gonna have an acid-base reaction. So I'm gonna take one of, and this is just a special kind of a double displacement reaction. And we've been talking about double displacement reactions. And in the double displacement reaction, you guys will remember that the anion from one compound comes in and replaces the anion in the other compound and they swap spots. So you just have to be careful with this when we're doing um, acid-base reactions because while we can technically, or we can correctly write that the magnesium from our first compound, this is why I've written these in different colors, so you can see the magnesium comes from our first compound and the sulfur comes from our second compound. So we now have magnesium sulfide. And we're gonna do our little double check and we're gonna say, okay, magnesium is a plus two ion and sulfide is a minus two ion. And so I don't need to add any subscripts. So um, we're just going to cross those out. Now, it can be tempting to keep this two on this hydrogen, but we know that when we write compounds that we don't hold on to those subscripts unless it's a polyatomic ion. H is not a polyatomic ion. So I'm going to write the hydrogen ion and the hydroxide ion. And just like before, I am going to double check charges. Hydrogen ion is a plus one. Hydroxide ion is a minus one. So I don't need any additional subscripts. So 
Um, we normally don't write H-O-H, we normally write H-2-O. So I'm gonna rewrite that down here, H-2-O, and my magnesium sulfide. And now I wanna think about states of matter. Um, this is a sulfide compound. We know this is happening in water because our reaction over here, we have aqueous. So magnesium sulfide, sulfides are insoluble. So I know this is gonna be a solid. So I'm gonna write a little S here. And the water is gonna be a liquid. So I'm gonna write an L in parentheses here. So I started out with H2S aqueous and magnesium hydroxide. Now, on this side, I have two hydrogens and two more hydrogens. So I have a total of four. On this side, I only have two right now. So I'm gonna put a two as a coefficient in front of water. And now I have uh, two oxygens. And on this side, I have two oxygens and my equation is balanced. The other way to think about this is that I had two hydrogens and two hydroxides, and that's always gonna make two waters. You don't have to go through this whole process of writing out the HOH and then changing it to H2O. I just like you guys to see where it's coming from. So that's our first example problem. Let's do another example problem together. So our second example problem, we have ammonium hydroxide. And again, I see that I have hydroxide here and we have hydrofluoric acid. Now it's important to remember our naming conventions. So remember hydrofluoric means that it is hydrogen and the element. That hydro prefix tells us that we just have hydrogen and the element named in the acid name. If we had fluoric acid, that would mean that it was hydrogen and the fluorate ion. And if we had fluorous acid, that would mean we had hydrogen and the fluorite ion. Okay, so we have our hydroxide and our hydrogen. So we're going to, again, recognize that this is just a double displacement reaction. Fluoride's gonna come in and replace hydroxide. Hydroxide's gonna come in and replace fluoride. So we're gonna have ammonium and H4, that's our cation, and the fluoride ion from the hydrofluoric acid. And we're going to have hydrogen from the hydrofluoric acid and hydroxide from the ammonium hydroxide. And now we're gonna look at these and determine states. Um, NH4F, ammonium is one of our ions that we know is always soluble no matter what it's paired with. So we're gonna give this an AQ. And again, this is water. We can write this as H2O. And because this is water, we know that it's liquid. So these are pretty simple and straightforward. An acid and a base are always going to make water and some salt. And remember that in chemistry, when we say salt, we just mean ionic compound, not um, sodium chloride. So if we go back to our first example, we can see that we made water here and here with our magnesium sulfide, this is also a salt. So always double check, you should never make something like H3OH or H2OH or HOH2. You should always be making water and some salt and then balance your equation. So let's take a look at the first one of the problems that you're gonna be working through today. So we've already done these two um, and, oops, we'll change that. Okay, um, so we've done these two. Let's go ahead and do number one and number two. So writing the balanced chemical equation for this neutralization reaction. So we're told we have nitric acid so nitric acid is going to be, because it has the ick ending, I know I'm looking for nitrate. So the hydrogen ion and the nitrate ion. And nitrate is a negative one charge, so it just needs one hydrogen to balance it. This is an acid, so it's aqueous. 
and sodium hydroxide. So I'm gonna write sodium in A and hydroxide, which is OH. Um, and again, this has sodium in it, so we know that it's soluble. So we're gonna write that this is in solution. And as before, we're gonna practice, we're gonna swap the hydroxide in and the nitrate in, and our salt is gonna be sodium nitrate, NaNO3, and that's gonna be aqueous because it has sodium and nitrate, and those are both always soluble, and water, because we know it's gonna make water. Now let's check and see if this is balanced. I have one sodium, one sodium, one nitrate, one nitrate, two hydrogens, I have one, two hydrogens, and one oxygen, one oxygen, so this is balanced. Okay, so for number two, hydroiodic acid, that hydro prefix tells me that this is hydrogen and the element named in the name. And since it's iodic, iodine, so that's HI. And this is an acid, so it's aqueous. And calcium hydroxide. So I'm gonna write CA, and then I'm gonna write hydroxide, so that's the OH. But now, Calcium is a plus two ion. So I need to put the hydroxide in parentheses because it's only a minus one ion. And I need two of those because that will give me two negative ones to go with my positive two. And calcium hydroxide, most hydroxides are insoluble, but this is with a heavy group two. So this is soluble. So I'm gonna write an A Q. And now we're going to swap. Hydroxide comes in, iodine scoots over here. I have calcium iodide, but again, calcium's a plus two. Iodine's only a minus one, so I need two minus ones to go with my plus two. And this is um, a halogen, so it's gonna be soluble. And water. Now notice that I just wrote water. Even though there's two hydroxides here and only one hydrogen here, I know this is a neutralization reaction. This is going to make water. So I'm gonna write the water and put a little L there. And now I'm gonna go back and try to balance. So CaI2, I have one calcium, one calcium, two iodine. So I need to put a two in front of my hydroiodic acid to give me two iodide ions. Now that gives me two hydrogens and two hydrogens. So that gives me four. So I need to put a two in front of my water to make this be four hydrogens and two oxygens and the two oxygens. And now my equation is balanced. As always, if you have any questions, let me know. I look forward to seeing you.